In this video, I want to talk a little bit more with you about discerning the times. We've been told that the sons of Issachar knew the times so that they would know what Israel ought to do. We've also been told, uh, you know, by Jesus when he said to the Pharisees and uh, Sadducees, he called them hypocrites for not discerning the times. He said, you know how to, you know how to discern whether it's going to rain or whether it's going to be hot but you don't know how to discern the times right now. And now think about this. John the Baptist was calling people in to repent. He was telling people that the Messiah was coming. He was a prophet and regarded by the people as a prophet. And then Jesus came and he performed miracles and he did all of these things and they were hypocrites. They would not discern. They would not admit that he was the Christ. What am I telling you right now? God has sent you witnesses to tell you the times. So if you do not discern, you are as guilty as the Pharisees and Sadducees who were not discerning the times. You would be called a hypocrite, which means you need to go back to God and you need to ask him if what I'm saying is true. It's not for you to discern. It's for him to discern and reveal to you. And here's what else I want to tell you. God is going to answer you no matter what. And you ask for that. You say, Lord, confirm what she's saying. Confirm it without a doubt in, as only you can or disprove what she's saying. You ask him for that because I know God and I know that he will answer no matter what. You don't be lazy and say, well, he's not, he's not speaking to me, therefore... I've made a unilateral decision that what you're saying is true or what you're saying is not true. No, you need to ask him to prove to you what the truth is. And he will. I know that he will, but you have to know that he will. You have to believe that when you ask him for wisdom that he will give it. The other day we were doing a study of end times in Bible study and someone asked about NATO because I've talked about NATO before. But part the reason why I've talked about NATO, so I want to put this into context for you, is because there are key players in the end times. Biblical prophecy between Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Revelation 13, and Revelation 17 is crystal clear that the Antichrist is that kingdom of counterfeit Christianity started by papal Rome, the kingdom of papal Rome. That is the Antichrist. And we know that the next kingdom or beast that rises in Revelation 13 and is testifying to this beast is the United States. It's the only other kingdom that could be because there are eight kingdoms. Well, actually, there are seven kingdoms, and the eighth kingdom is one of the seven. The Antichrist that's, that was, now is not, but will rise again, as spoken of in Revelation 17. We know that that is papal Rome and the prostitutes that were out of, out of her. Babylon the Great and the prostitutes that bore out of her in counterfeit Christianity through the Reformation. We know that the United States is the false prophet because there's only two other kingdoms after papal Rome. And that is the one that took it down, which is not going to testify to it, which is atheistic communism. And then the United States took down communism. That's the one testifying to papal Rome to counterfeit Christianity. And as a matter of fact, if you don't remember, you may not remember this, but Pope John Paul II assisted the United States in taking down that kingdom that took down papal Rome, atheistic communism. Now, there are also 10 toes or 10 kings that came out of the fourth kingdom, which is the kingdom of pagan Rome. And that's the 10 Germanic tribes that became Western Europe. So these are key players in the end times, papal Rome. Europe, and the United States, and all of counterfeit Christianity that bore out of their harlot mother, papal Rome. So it would behoove us to understand how this is being played out right now, wouldn't it? Since we're literally living in biblical prophecy, since we're literally living, I mean, during our lifetime, that kingdom was taken down. So it's only a matter of time before the next one rises, isn't it? And the United States has played a major role in setting that kingdom up to rise, in testifying to that kingdom, as is spoken of in Revelation 13. So you need to understand that much of this propaganda that has, been, that has come out regarding climate change is coming from Europe. And as a matter of fact, they have a lot of influence on what goes on in the United States through 
the United Nations. So let's understand the difference between the UN, NATO, and the EU, because I think that that might be tripping some people up. NATO is not necessarily the beast, but NATO is involved in the beast. The players in NATO, in the UN, in the EU, these are all players that are coming together as that beast. Remember that the Antichrist is a harlot riding a beast, is Babylon the Great and the prostitutes that bore out of her. So the harlot riding the beast. So we have counterfeit Christianity, but counterfeit Christianity is controlling what? What is a beast in scripture? A beast is government. It's a kingdom or it's a system of kingdoms and governments. So the United Nations plays a mediating role in in international conflicts. This is where government comes to play. NATO, the EU, all under the guise of government. Who's the puppeteer? The harlot. Counterfeit Christianity. You can see that in things like Laudato Si, which claim to be religious, claims to be speaking on the authority of Christ, rewrites the Ten Commandments to the Ten Commandments of climate change. What happened to God's judgment? What happened to the covenant that he made with us that states when I send these things, if my people who are called by my name will turn to me, I will heal their land. What happened to the covenant in his people who recognize that when he sends these things, it's because of them, not because of the world. You have to recognize that the propaganda is the extension of an anti-covenant, of a covenant that is in opposition to what God has established with his people, which is, I'm the sovereign God. I'm the one doing these things, and I'm doing them for my reasons. And you need to recognize those reasons. So here is the government part, but you need to understand the puppeteer behind the propaganda. The UN plays a mediating role in international conflicts. They have the necessary legal instruments to impose restrictions on those countries that it considers a danger or a threat to global peace and security. So it is able to place sanctions, for example. NATO is based on military cooperation. So NATO is an alliance in which anyone who is involved in NATO provide military support to one another if they're being attacked by other nations. So what they claim is an attack on one of them is an attack on all of them. That's their treaty. The European Union is a geopolitical entity that covers probably most of the European continent, but they don't have that same sanctioning ability that the UN has. And likewise, it's not a military cooperation like NATO. It's simply an organization that attempts to unite European countries, get them on the same page of one mind, as the word says. And that's going to be important. There's never been unity, by the way, in Europe. There's not been unity. However, at this particular time, and you should be able to discern the times, because God has said that he is going to put it in their heart to be of one mind. And the reason for this is because they are going to hand over their authority to that antichrist. So they will rise in power. They have crowns. They have been given power and authority only. They've never been given power and authority before, but they will be given power and authority now in order to hand over their authority to the antichrist. They've never been united until now. But God has put this in their heart to be of one mind. Just as we are of one mind with him, they are of one mind with the beast. So when the word says that the false prophet is going to be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur along with the beast, what are we talking about here? We're talking about those who are of one mind. And if they're of one mind, they're of one heart. Because God tells us that defilement comes from the heart It's going to come out of your right hand, your deeds, your forehead, your thoughts, and what you profess out of your mouth. So these are the differences between the United Nations, NATO, and the European Union. Those are the differences 
but you need to understand that they are all working together, many of whom are not just on one of these committees or in these summits, they are in multiple or all of these alliances. And what God is doing at this point in history is bringing these together to be of one mind. They have military power. They have legal power. They have global influence. And so if you know that, you won't be fooled by the schemes of the devil when he tries to hide behind science and scientific language, the field that denies Christ, that says there is no creator. How do these things go together, guys? How do they go together? Your covenant is what? What is the covenant that God established? Because we need to sit with what he established with his people. If you truly believe and take seriously what he said, you would never buy into these quote unquote solutions. You would know the times and know what you need to do. You would not be saying, I need to get an EV. I need to get solar panels. Uh, we need to cut emissions. God can lead you into anything. If there's something that needs to be done, he can lead you to that. But the first thing he says that needs to be done is return to him. So why are pastors painting this out? You know, they're taking that scientific language and trying to turn it into some sort of biblical language, which isn't even, they don't even talk about being a good steward of the earth. Where'd that come from? Yeah, we take care of the earth because that should be, you know, common sense to us. We should be taking care of animals. I don't hear anyone talking about that. But I've been hearing pastors for a while saying we're supposed to be good stewards of the earth and therefore climate propaganda is Christian. Therefore, Laudato Si is Christian. I don't think so. Let's compare and contrast. Here's what God says. If my people, when I send these things, when I send famine, plague, drought, war, whatever it is that he's sending, when I hand you over to your enemies, okay, if my people people who are called by my name will turn to me and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, grieve, mourn, wail, lament, put on sackcloth and ashes, humble themselves and seek my face and repent. Then I will return to them. Then I will heal their land. Then I will heal them. That's your covenant. That is your covenant with Christ. That when you notice certain things in your life, when you notice certain sensations, you're having an illness, he's afflicting you, he's destroying things, you're supposed to recognize and turn to him. So recognize the times. If this is happening, and it is, it's ridiculous to deny that these things are happening. And there are people who are denying that these things are happening. They're completely delusional. If what, is, if, if what you're seeing, what they're calling climate change is truly happening, and it is, his people are supposed to do what? What's his covenant? His people are supposed to recognize the times so that they will do what Israel ought to do, so that they will know what Israel ought to do. Where are we at in history, guys? Where are we at in history? In biblical prophecy. When God established this covenant with his people, and instead of doing that, God's people are turning to climate propaganda and saying things like, Lord, please protect the people of such and such. Who do you think is sending this? Why is he sending this? Why are God's people saying that? Why are they not praying that those people who are experiencing judgment in various areas will turn to God? Because that's what's coming out of their hearts. They don't believe in their covenant. They don't believe or know what God has established with his people. They don't believe in a sovereign God. That is the appearance of godliness while denying his power. Is that what he says in his word? These people draw near to me with their lips. Oh, protect them, Lord. I declare in the name of Jesus, protect them. Draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. If you only understood your covenant, you would never be praying like that. Stop it. He's doing something. And he says that these things are happening because of his people. You're the salt of the earth. You're the reason the earth is preserved. But when you lose your saltiness, guess what? Destruction will come. This is a problem created by humans, 
But it is not a problem created by all humans. It's a problem created by God's people. Those who claim to know him, who have gotten so far that he's got to send this kind of judgment. And it is serious judgment. There is something happening every single day, and yet it's not being televised. Why? Why is it not being televised? I guarantee you that the verbal explanation is that they don't want to rile up people like Greta Thunberg or Turnberg or whatever her name is, but that's not what it is. God's people, if they saw this was going on, if they were even aware of half of the things going on in this world right now, the floods and destruction that God's sending, the plagues, being on the brink of World War III, are all of those things climate change? I mean, are plagues and war caused by climate change? Come on. Financial ruin? Because there's, there's a pattern. Plague, financial ruin, war. That happened with World War I, and it happened with World War II. You mean to tell me that there, the climate change is to blame for all those things? Or is this God doing exactly what he said he would do in the covenant to warn us that it's time to return to him? What are the times, guys, when Europe, which has never been unified, never been united, comes together and the United States comes together with Europe and Laudato Si is influencing communications and legislation in the United Nations, what are the times, people of God? Are his witnesses here right now? Or we have another thousand years to go. What are the times? This science that is being perpetuated in the United Nations, in Laudato Si, is an anti-covenant. So when you see in the word that a covenant is being extended at the beginning of that seven years, it is a covenant that is an anti-covenant. It is in opposition to what God has established. Do you recognize it or not? Are you going to return to God or are, is your reliance, is your trust, is your hope in science? The field that from the very beginning has denied that there is a God. The field that from the very beginning bore out of people rejecting the word of God and going to listen to those who were wise in their own eyes. Philosophers who have no wisdom at all but give you some other option than the covenant God has extended to you. What's it going to be, guys? Do you hear the word? Do you hear that Ahaziah sent his men to go consult of Beelzebub as to whether he was going to live or die when he fell from that lattice in the roof? And that God said, you go back and tell Ahaziah, God said through Elijah, go back and tell Ahaziah that because you have done this, because you have rejected the God of Israel, and you have sent your men to go and consult of Beelzebub as to whether you're going to live or die. You will surely die. What's the difference between that and going to a doctor to tell you if you're going to live or die? Ingesting their poisons. Going to scientists to tell you what's going to happen next with the world. What we need to do and implement in legislation in order for the world to not be destroyed. Does God, is God not sovereign over the world? Does he not have the ability to restore the world. It's so interesting. When, when COVID first hit and those shutdowns happened, people were returning to God. I heard people saying things like, maybe there is a God and maybe he's upset. And the world started to be restored. And you know what people did? Oh, it's because we weren't driving our cars. That's why. That's why. It's because we weren't driving our cars. The earth was responding. In fact, animals were responding. God was healing because his people were returning to him. And then you know what? They couldn't wait to go back to normal, could they? Oh, good. We're back to normal, back to our lives, back to building our own houses. What heals the earth? Cutting emissions? That's the United Nations propaganda. Humans created this problem. Cut emissions, adapt to climate impacts. Everything from the science God, which is what Francis perpetuates. And then they force you. And you should be recognizing the times. You should be recognizing that in everything, all of your documentation, when you have kids, you got to bring in your medical documentation for everything, don't you? Where's their immunization record? K-12 
can't even get a social security number unless you have that medical documentation. You got to do it with your animals too. In order for them to be licensed, you got to get show their immunization record. You're not going to be able to have freedoms unless you show that you've had the COVID vaccine. You will submit. You will submit. But let me tell you what the word says. Those who know their God will firmly resist the Antichrist. They will not join that covenant. And those who don't will be flattered by the Antichrist. So it's not going to be easy for you to be here. You will be persecuted. But remember that I've been saying in these videos, don't go saying that you're being persecuted just because you're so special. You are going to have to put your faith where your mouth is. It's going to have to come out of your behaviors, your thoughts, and your mouth. You can't just say that you're in Christ and then claim that every little thing, you have a booger and you're being persecuted. You are going to have to put your faith in your right hand, your forehead, and your mouth. You need to recognize the times. You need to sit with what he established with his people and really rend your heart to what that looks like because it doesn't look like what I see counterfeit Christians talking about and doing. He says, I am your healer. When I send these things, I'll heal you and I'll heal your, heal your land. He says, I will not put on you any of the diseases I put on the Egyptians if you obey my laws and my decrees. I am the Lord, your healer. We don't believe it. We do not. The majority of people do not believe this to be true. They claim him while subsidizing. And really, they, it, I mean, honestly, the way that it is, if you're taking medication, if you are going to a doctor to tell you whether you're going to live or die, and you think that medication or those herbs or those tinctures or those potions are going to heal you, that's your God. And you're supposedly subsidizing with Christ. That's your God. You don't believe that he can heal you. That's what's coming out of your right hand. That's what's in your forehead. What are the times, guys? There will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be plagues. He will be harming the earth. There will be plagues that are spirits. A spirit will go out of a person and it will return. Stop calling it autism, ADHD, anxiety disorder, dyslexia. I don't care what the world says about it. Jesus said children are affected by the sin of the parents. That what is going to happen with this generation is that when a spirit goes out of a person, it will go through arid places looking for rest, come back, uh, not find it, come back, find the house swept clean and unoccupied. And the final condition of that person will be worse than it was at first. So it will be with this generation. What is a diagnostic manual? It is deception for those who do not love truth. If you believe in the word, if you truly have faith, this will be coming out of the way that you think so that when these things happen or you're looking at what's going on in your life, you are going to understand it by the word and by God's spirit, not by some expert in the world. So many people are arguing about what this war is all about. I've had people come against me in vile and accusatory ways saying that I hate Jews because I'm saying I'm talking about what God is bringing from a biblical perspective. Therefore, I, I hate Jews. And I was, I was watching a visit that Ben Shapiro made to Oxford University and watching these debates that were going on between the two of them because I wanted to understand what are people saying about this war. And the thing that keeps being said on one side is that this is genocide of Palestinians. On the other side, well, oh, so if you say this, then that means that you are for the genocide of, of Israel. And I was noticing how easy it is to get tripped up in those political, in that authority of the world, in those political debates. And I find it interesting that those claiming to be religious don't speak on the authority of what God's doing. They're out, he's out there claiming that this is persecution when it's judgment. This is not persecution just for being your special self. This is judgment. When God starts bringing enemies against people, it is judgment because he has had every ability in every other situation in the Bible to take a tiny army and make his people prevail. If that's not happening, 
what do you think this is? If he's handed you over to enemies, what do you think this is? Is he shaking you up to wake you up? What is coming out of a person's mouth? The authority on which they speak is the spirit in their heart. And all I kept thinking last night is, what about God and what he said? What about his authority? If what's coming out of your mouth is the authority of politics, the authority of medicine, the authority of science, that's what's in your heart. The very things that deny God. Oh, oh, but America, oh, they're so godly, right? You know, they always say, God, 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 Christ, Christ, Christ. The cake and eat it too gospel. We're the world, but we also want Christ. So here's my authority of the world, period. Amen. Praise God. What are the times, guys, the appearance of godliness, but denying his power? What are the times? What are the times we're living in? I have illustrated several things for you regarding the times right now. I have illustrated the key players that are coming together, the covenant that was extended by the Antichrist through the United Nations. This is a what? Writing a what? It is a church. That is the puppeteer, counterfeit Antichrist religion that is actually controlling legislation, that is actually the one influencing what you see going on in politics right now that you keep calling politics. And all of these key players have one purpose, and it is to hand over their authority to that beast. That beast is in control right now. And when the witnesses have completed testifying, you're going to see it rise, and you're going to be shocked. But you won't be surprised if you are discerning these things right now. If you are one of the wise, as is written in Daniel 12, the wicked will keep doing what they do, but the wise will understand. So God does expect us to understand. He does expect us to discern with him. If you truly believe and take seriously what he has said, you will not buy into these things. Please discern this with God.